Good evening, East Alabama. Welcome into the locker room presented by Tits, Floors and Beyond. I'm Nimeth Pitts. It's a Tuesday afternoon looking much better today than it did yesterday. And it was a busy day for me today as I made my way to Weaver High School, spent some time at Weaver High School talking with the head coach of the Bearcat Wrestling Program, head coach Andy Fulmer, spent some time also with assistant coach Justin Brown, talked with the head track coach Bo Wynn and a couple track stars. And so today's show and tomorrow's show is going to be featured featuring the Weaver High School Bearcats. Today we're going to take a look at the defending North sectional champions, the Weaver Bearcats, who are also the defending Class 1A through 4A state champions. After winning back-to-back -back state championships, they're seeking to win their third straight traditional championship this weekend and looking to win their fourth championship in three years overall. So today we're going to be talking Weaver Bearcat wrestling. But I want to remind you to hit that like and follow button on our East Alabama Now page so that you don't miss the locker room. We're here every weekday, Monday through Friday at 5 p.m. Also, do not forget about East Alabama Now's news. It's nightly every night at 6.30 p.m. Mike Stedham's back tonight joining Katie Edwards. John Holder has your local weather keeping us up to date on what the weather is going to look like the rest of the week as a lot of us here in East Alabama get ready to travel to Jacksonville State University for regional basketball or maybe like me you're getting ready to hit the road tomorrow evening and head up to Huntsville for the AHSA State Wrestling Tournament as you'll spend the weekend in Huntsville all the way through Saturday. So I want to remind you again to hit that like and follow button. We've talked Weaver Bearcat Wrestling a lot this season, and for ones that even say maybe you feel like all I do is talk about Weaver, well, that's the storyline. The storyline is three straight traditional championships. The storyline is four state championships in three years, and the storyline is just quite frankly, this has been a dominant wrestling program all year long, start to finish. They won sectionals by 51 points over Corner, who took second place. They had 13 of their 14 wrestlers that qualified for the state tournament this weekend in Huntsville. They had Kale Fulmer in the finals, who came up short to Owen Burns of Asheville. They had Hayden Heiss in the finals, who ended up defeating Mason Hom of White Plains. And then Torres at 144 made the finals before losing to Millwood from Corner. Jolliffe made the finals before losing to Pryor from Dora. They had four different guys in the finals. Had a couple wrestling for third, a couple wrestling for fifth and sixth place. It's been a dominant program. That dominant program is Weaver. And I'm just sitting here saying... If I'm a guy that really wants to be a part of a winning culture here in Cowan County, and I'm trying to decide where do I want to wrestle, you know, you see people move for football. If that's the case for wrestling, you want to go wrestle for Andy Fulmer and the Weaver Bearcats. Although there's some really good programs around here in Cowan County that you certainly would be good at as well. I took some highlights while I was out at Weaver. Those highlights are presented by Lindsey Barger of Really Real Real Estate. Are you ready to buy or sell? Well, together with Lindsey Barger, we can help make your home dreams a reality. She specializes in home buying, selling, and investing. Whether you want to buy a personal home, buy land to build a dream home, sell a rental home, or buy a home to flip and resell, Lindsey Barger is your friend through it all. I know for a fact that she would love to guide you in the process today, so call her at 256 441 2389. Call her for all your real estate needs and do not forget to like and follow her on Facebook and Instagram at lindsaybarger.realtor. Took some highlights at Weaver. You see them right there, the 2022 1A through 4A Wrestling State Champions. Here's all the state champions at Weaver Mike Allison, Frank Hardzog. I mean, there's a lot of names right there. You see Nick Souter, a couple names, Chopwood, Kerry Water. That is the motto for the Weaver Bearcat Wrestling Program. And you see right here, mental toughness is just as important as physical strength and wrestling. you got to have a growth mindset, effort, and attitude equals results. 2022 state champions, 2023, they won 99, 01, 02, 03, and 04. That's four years in a row. Andy Fulmer's got to do it this year and next to match that. You see the Bearcat right there, a couple trophies. 1A, 4A, Region 6 duels champion this uh, year and last year. Arab girls, Oxford Sting, Piedmont dog fight. The Alexandria grappling in the jungle team run up in 2021. 94, 95, 2000. Again, just some, just some highlights from the Weaver Wrestling Room. You see it right there again. 99, 01. They won 97, 98, 99, 01. Missed out in 2000. If they won 2000, that would have been, what, six straight, seven straight? You see some newer hardware right here. We're in Coach Fulmer's office now. State Championship Coach Award, Andrew Fulmer. State Championship Coach Award, Andrew uh, Fulmer. Coach Andy Fulmer. They put Andy Fulmer on one, Andrew Fulmer on the other, and things you notice when you're in media. Anyway, See a lot of accomplishments for this Weaver team. Again, they're back-to-back -back state champions, traditional runner-up the year before that. Here's some more hardware down in Gulf Shores, and here's the wrestling room. This is where the Bearcats, the top team in the state of Alabama, practice each and every day. Coach Andy Fulmer, though, 
trying to stay loose, trying not to, to sense the pressure that everyone else like me puts on him. Just wants his team to stay loose, wants them to wrestle Bearcat wrestling, which is every match matters, not just the right side of the bracket, but for the guys that end up on the left, knowing that you could win a state championship on the left side. He talked about that. There was a couple years ago when Asheville won the state championship, they didn't have a single guy win the individual state championship but scored all these points on the left side of the bracket in consolations. So Weaver may not have those big names this year like they've had in the past with the Nick Souders, the Joe Hansons, the Andersons, the, the Jacob Howards. Uh, they may not have those big names, but they've got guys that are showing up and doing their part, whether that's on the championship side or the consolation. They had 13 out of 14 wrestlers that made the state tournament. The only one that missed out on the state tournament was their heavyweight, Caden Green. But outside of that, at 108, Kel Fulmer made the state tournament. Peyton Andrews made the state tournament. Hayden Heiss made the state tournament. Gabriel Snyder made the state tournament. Dylan Brown made the state tournament. Then you've got Caden Thornton, Chris Thornton, Hunter Heiss all made the state tournament. Brandon Jolliffe, Zachary Hooks all made the state tournament. Again, they took 13 out of 14. There's a couple guys that I'm missing right there in the middle of the bracket, in the middle of the lineup. Torres, Kirby Barnes, both adding as well for them, making it into the state tournament. And there's one more that I'm missing on that lineup that made the state tournament that has slipped my mind right now. But either way, this is a really, really good team for uh, Weaver that's obviously looking to win. I think they could win three straight state championships. You got to feel like if there's a threat to them, of course, you got to feel like it would still come from Dora or Asheville. Oak Grove had a great showing in the south section. Corner did good in the north, but you got to feel like when it comes to some of the seedings and way that things lined it up in the north section, you'd have to think that, uh, or lined up in the state tournament, you have to think that maybe Dora, Dora and Asheville, in my opinion, would have the best opportunity to dethrone Weaver if someone is going to do that this weekend. Looking at this Weaver team, again, this is the team that's went and won the dual state championship, beat St. James head-to-head, -head, won some big matchups against St. James to win that. Um, and, of course, I missed out on Fink. Dalton Fink was the other guy that qualified for state. I apologize. Dalton Fink placed third at sectionals this past weekend and has been a really, really good wrestler for Weaver. Um, but you've got to feel like I'm looking here. You like think if Fulmer could beat Bailey in the semis potentially, think we could see Kel Fulmer in the finals at 108. Obviously, Heiss and Hom in the semis. Maybe maybe Heiss could get in at 120. Uh, Fink is obviously going to have a tough task with Rouse. Uh, Jolliffe's going to have to go through Bragg at 215. Thornton, maybe Elijah Thomas. So a couple different guys looking at the, uh, the draws that feel like they could potentially find themselves wrestling on Saturday for a state championship. For everybody else, you're fighting to get uh, they have aspirations to be state champions too, but probably fighting to try to get to that third place uh, match, maybe even get on the podium at fifth and sixth place. So not a lot of uh, a lot of buys in the first round, so not a lot of opportunities for Weaver to score points. But when you take 13 out of 14 wrestlers, you've got an opportunity to score in about every single weight class, whereas a lot of teams are not going to have that ability. But speaking of Weaver, speaking of Andy Fulmer, we're going to talk with Andy Fulmer when we come back. Later this show, we're going to talk with Justin Brown, the assistant coach of the Weaver Bearcat program, as we talk Weaver Bearcat Wrestling looking to win their third straight traditional state championship this weekend at Huntsville. When we come back, Andy Fulmer and me are going to talk wrestling here on The Locker Room, presented by Ted's Floors and Beyond. Ted's Floors and Beyond is excited to introduce our all new outdoor living collection. Have you ever dreamed of elevating or even creating an outdoor living space? Whether it be for grilling, lounging, playing, entertaining, or just winding down, our quality tile and stone combined with our expert craftsmanship will no doubt create unforgettable outdoor moments with family and friends while also enhancing the beauty and value of your home. Call us today. For over 60 years, Oxford Lumber has been servicing our area and our customer service has always been our main focus. Our customer service is what sets us apart from anyone else. From the moment you enter, our highly trained staff will treat you like family. To enthusiastically provide total customer satisfaction within a positive and self-fulfilling employee relations environment. Visit us at any of our four locations or at OxfordLumber.com.
Ted's Floors and Beyond brings you the locker room each and every day. Ted's Floors and Beyond has all your flooring needs, whether it's hardwood, laminate, carpet, tile, or luxury vinyl. They have it for you right there at Ted's. You can go by their showroom there in Anniston, and you can pick out what you like, want, and need, and they can do that there at Ted's. Also, they've got their partnership with Welburn Cabinet and will offer you a complete kitchen or bath makeover. That includes cabinets, countertops, flooring, backsplashes, tile showers. They can get it done there at Ted's Floors and Beyond, and now they offer you work on your outdoor space. Whether it's an outdoor kitchen, patio, or living space, they have specially made outdoor tiles and stones that can enhance your outdoor experience. Go by and see them today at their showroom in Anniston on Highway 431, right before you get to Saks Elementary School, or visit them online at shopteds.com. That is shopteds.com. Ted's Floors and Beyond brings you the locker room. We continue on on the locker room presented by Ted's Floors and Beyond. We're at Weaver High School today talking with the head coach of the Weaver Bearcats, Coach Andy Fulmer, whose team is seeking their third straight traditional state championship this weekend in Huntsville. And it started pretty good last weekend when they were down in Birmingham at the AHSA North Sectional where they basically dominated the North section, winning by 51 points over corner, who got second place. Coach, let's start with sectionals. You guys didn't win sectionals last year, but you did win state. This year you do win sectionals. Talk about how you felt like your team wrestled last weekend. Uh, felt overall, uh, all of our kids, for the most part, wrestled, um, wrestled well. We had some really tough matchups. Um, they continue. I mean, it's been kind of the the running the running thing for us. They've just they've been loose. That's just it, we're keeping it fun, so not making any match bigger than um, than it has to be because it's just wrestling anyway. So uh, we just focus one match at a time, and the kids they're bought into what we're trying to do. So um, last weekend was fun. Um, we're in a really good section, so um, won a lot of big matches that helped us for this week, um, kind of set us up in some brackets. And then, of course, you look at some of the other brackets, there's some tougher draws, but um, really like this group. I've been saying it all year. They're special, they're gritty, they're scrappy, they're tough. Um, so we look to carry what we did last weekend into this coming weekend, knowing that there's not going to be any matches that are going to be easy. So we just keep putting our head down and having that blue collar mentality and just working the best we can and wrestling smart, staying in good position. Coach, the storyline obviously is Weaver Bearcat seeking their third straight traditional championship, four championships in three years overall. But there's another storyline that you could run with by yourself, and that is five eighth graders making the state tournament in Huntsville. This team is young. This team is young. I don't think people realize just how young this team is. You have one senior in Chris Thornton who starts on your team as in the starting lineup. And I believe junior-wise you have maybe one or four. two, four juniors okay, mm -hmm. that are starting. Mm -hmm. Four juniors starting. Okay, that's more than I thought. But then you look at you got a sophomore, freshman, five eighth graders. So seven of your 14 weight classes, you're basically looking at having the next three, four years. Five eighth graders making the state tournament. Not many teams can say that they have five eighth graders making the state tournament. Talk about those eighth graders. They're 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 a really good group. We you know we, for a while we were down and we've started being able to build what we what was back in I guess Coach Taylor's glory days. Um, there's a lot of hype about these young guys, and that's why we're just we're, we're preaching to them just to keep it fun. Um, you know, only one of them that is a as a qualifier this year as an eighth grader was there last year. You know, uh, a couple of the other ones um, we had two that weren't in the lineup, and then we had two that were. Um, that lost in a blood round or had lost early on. Um, so they kind of set the tone, you know, um, Friday. You know, we had one win, then he was in, had another one win. It was just like chain reaction. Um, and I think they feed off of each other. So I think these young guys uh, and the old guys, these older guys, they've, they kind of they kind of play off of each other a little bit. These young guys don't want to disappoint the older guys and, and vice versa, the older guys don't want to look bad. Um, so everybody's pulling their weight. And, um, you know, it, it was really exciting to watch. The, you know, we've got five eighth graders going to state tournament. We've got a ninth grader. We've got two sophomores. We've got the one senior and we've got four juniors. So um, we're, we're fairly are, we've, are a fairly young team. Um, the eighth graders, they're, they're different. They're not normal eighth graders. They've got a lot of wrestling experience, but they're still eighth graders, which, you know, you, you got to keep that in, in mind as well. So we're, we're really excited for what they were able to accomplish last week. And uh, I know those five for sure, and I know the other eight as well, all 13 guys want to build on what we did last weekend um, into something bigger this week. So um, we, like, we like the group we've got, and we're really excited about this coming weekend. 
Coach, I don't want to diminish winning sectionals because that is a big accomplishment. But, Coach, last year you lost sectionals, one state. Your son came up short in the 106 final sectionals. Heist beat Hom, but you got to flush that because in reality what happened this past weekend, quite frankly, is not going to matter come Sunday. So how do you get your guys to flush what happened this past weekend, good or bad, and look forward to saying, even Jolliffe with Pryor and saying, this weekend is what matters. This is the moment right here. What happened last week is insignificant compared to this weekend. We just go back and we just a lot of watching the film, you know, and, you know, because we've got – We've got the options. We can watch film. The kids watching on their own. We can sit and do you know film review with them. Um, main thing is just to keep to stay level headed and not be emotional when we're wrestling and just stay under control. Um, and and the thing I mean I know it's cliche. We're just the kids are having fun. So we're just gonna preach having fun. Um, wrestling's fun. It's not a job. Um, it's not. It's you know they know that what they know what they have to do so they're gonna they're gonna prepare this week they're gonna get where they need to be weight wise putting the right things in our body um, getting plenty of rest and and polishing up on technique and skill while we're in the room uh, the first part of the week so they know what they have to do the the message doesn't change you know if you lost to somebody or you beat somebody, you know that they're gonna work um, and everything is gonna be earned, it's not given to you. So those guys, uh, whether they lost in the section finals or if they were the sixth place in the North, they know they know what they have to do. So we don't have to preach it to them. We're just gonna, we're gonna fix things that we know that we need to fix and we're just gonna drill and we're gonna be in good shape and we're just gonna polish up technique this week and keep everybody healthy. So the message doesn't change. We're just gonna stay loose and have fun. and. Um, you know, refocus from if we had some disappointments last week, we're just going to refocus. And if we had some success last week, we're going to continue to work to improve on that as well. Coach, some coaches are superstitious. Superstitious. They win two state championships in a row. They stay at the same hotel again. Some might bring out the same jacket from the previous few years. I don't know. Uh, are you a superstitious coach? We are staying at the same place we've stayed at the past <laughs> two years. So um, pay a little bit more out of the account um, for that. But um, – you know, they, the, the place we're staying at, they've been good to us. They've, you know, they've got the, the fitness area because I know some of my kids have probably spent a little bit of time in there. Um, but it's not far from the, the Von Braun. It's, I think, a couple minutes away. So, um, and it's not at the, you know, the embassy. I like the embassy, but it's everybody's there, and it just seems like it's so – I, th I think there's a lot of distractions, and it can be kind of chaotic at times, and they're great. I mean, we've stayed there before, but the um, place we're staying at, it's not right there at it. So um, – and it's the place we've stayed at the past two years. So um, that's where we're staying at. We're familiar with it. Kids are familiar with it. Probably keep pretty much the same room assignments as we did last weekend um, based on um, – what kids are able to do, what they can consume, and things like that as well. So a lot of routine for us from last week to this week as well. Coach, you get a lot of points for getting in the semis. You get a lot of points for getting to the finals. But I don't think a lot of people remember that you can win a tournament on the left side of the bracket. And so obviously you want as many guys as you can get in the state finals. But we've talked about since the beginning of the season, you don't really have those big names like you've had in years before, the Joe Hansons, the Souders, the Andersons, that people are going ahead and bubbling in. That's the state champion. You have a lot of guys that are solid that could get there. But you have also a lot of guys that get third place, a lot of guys that get fourth place, a lot of guys that score points on the left side of the bracket. How important is that going to be this weekend for if a guy maybe loses, you know, maybe in the quarters or the semis, you get him to say, hey, you can still help us win this championship by winning on the left side of the bracket. Yeah, and that's been kind of the mentality. A lot of our kids that made it to the, you know, that, that make it that made it to the finals this, this past weekend or even at the dogfight, some of those guys haven't been in the finals of every tournament. So they understand that I've got to, I've got to swallow my pride. I've got to, you know, I've got to refocus. I've got to get out of my feelings and then I've got to do what's best for our team. And, um, you know, the year at Asheville won it, they didn't have a single state champion. But mm -hmm. they, they scored more points in the Constellations than us. We had three individual state champions that year, and um, they didn't have any. But they had more guys score points in the Constellations than we did. So that, that helped them, you know, I think they finished like 30 – probably close to 25, 30, 40 points ahead of us um, the COVID year. So um, – you know, our, our kids know that they're going to have tough draws, and if it don't go their way, then they know they've got to battle back because that's what's going to be best for the team. So, um, you know, I like this group. They're solid top to bottom, and they're going to wrestle. They're going to give me the best effort they can, and um, we'll see what happens. It, it's going to be a fun weekend. 
Coach, I don't think there's another team in 1A through 4A that's taking 13 out of 14 weight classes to the state tournament. I don't know if there's – I'm sure there's maybe another team in 7A or 6A or 5A potentially that's taking 13 out of 14. Maybe somebody's taking all 14. But with that comes that one guy that didn't make it, that came up short. Obviously, for you, that was your heavyweight. What's that conversation to him to try to keep his head lifted up in a moment where he's seeing the rest of his teammates go to Huntsville? Uh, it just, you know, talking to him about, you know, it just um, – early on had some injuries he dealt with so um, you know it, it's part of it but um, it was just kind of a chain reaction and he just you know he had a tough draw in the um, in the constellations and he just uh, he got in bad position and that's part of wrestling so um, it's just one of those things he's a young kid uh, if he decides to come back then he'll have a chance to do some really good things for us if he don't then you know that that's part of it as well but, um, you know, it's just, you know, we're, we celebrate those guys that qualified. But, you know, he, he won a match as well um, this weekend, so that helped. So it was a complete total team effort. So we were, we were excited. And he's just a ninth grader. So um, if he decides to come back, I don't know if he wants to, but if he does, uh, he'll have a chance to, to be successful because he's a big, strong kid and he's just a ninth grader. So, um, you know, if he decides he wants to come back, then, you know, he'll, he'll have a chance to, to do some things next year as well. And he would have been at the sectional tournament so um, you know we had I think nine of our kids have been to sectionals before and five of them haven't so you know um, Kale and Peyton and um, uh, Chris and Hooks and Caden Green are heavy those five guys didn't go last year the other guys were on the varsity squad at the end of the year so they they had that experience with five guys that this was their first experience at the sectional tournament which will play play dividends for them in the future. So we're excited about that too as well. All right, Coach Andy Fulmer, but he has certainly not done it alone. He's had his buddy Justin Brown next to him for coach over 10 years, I believe, together coaching. Like 12 or 13 maybe, I don't know. Yeah. We lose track. And then Brown's been doing it together. They've been winning a lot of hardware. They're looking to do it again this weekend. When we come back, we're going to talk with the assistant coach, Justin Brown, of the Weaver Bearcat Wrestling Program. I'm Nameth Pitts. We'll be right back. You're watching The Locker Room, presented by Ted's Floors and Beyond. Ted's Floors and Beyond is excited to introduce our all new outdoor living collection. Have you ever dreamed of elevating or even creating an outdoor living space? Whether it be for grilling, lounging, playing, entertaining, or just winding down, our quality tile and stone combined with our expert craftsmanship will no doubt create unforgettable outdoor moments with family and friends while also enhancing the beauty and value of your home. Call us today. Since 1993, WM Grocery has been a major part of our local community. WM offers the very best in fresh produce and an outstanding meat department. WM also has many local products not found anywhere else and fresh sushi every day. If you need an event catered, come see Mrs. K at any WM store. Curbside pickup is also available for your online grocery orders. Be sure to download the WM app for all the deals of the week and shopper rewards. Go check them out today at any of their locations. We take pride in our community and appreciate your business. For metal buildings in Alabama and the southeast, Waldrop Manufacturing is your one-stop source. A Waldrop metal building provides the coverage and protection your investments need. They specialize in carports, RV covers, portable buildings, and storage buildings. Stop paying rent for storage. With Waldrop's price per foot, you can actually save money by buying straight from the manufacturer. Waldrop buildings are guaranteed because Waldrop manufactures buildings with U.S. Steel right here in Calhoun County. Waldrop Manufacturing, serving the entire Southeast. Give them a call today. Welcome back into the locker room presented by Ted's Floors and Beyond. We continue our action Weaver Wrestling. We are talking now with the assistant coach, Coach Justin Brown of the Weaver Bearcats. Coach, I was talking with Coach Fulmer. said over 12, 13 years together at this program. That's uh, probably one of the longest tenures between a head coach and an assistant. I mean, just, man, talk about the uh, fun, the, the achievements, just what it's been like to coach with him for 12, 13 years and have a chance to win three straight state championships this year. Um, so it, it has been 12 or 13 I'm not sure which one but um, started off by him asking me to come roll around with some of the big guys 12 13 years ago um, and we just kind of built a partnership from there and uh, I honestly feel like we're just I know what he's thinking he knows what I'm thinking we kind of we can play the good cop bad cop role um, 
it, it's been great. It's been fun. There's been bad times. There's been times that we haven't been good and, you know, second guess if it's us, or is it, what do we need to do? Um, these last few years, the success has been really fun. Um, and granted, I'm not, you know, we do say it's not about the wins and losses, but at the end of the day, you are a coach and you do want to see what you're doing in your rooms paying off out in competition. Mm -hmm. You guys do a good job of balancing the girls as well. Like whether he goes with them for a weekend and you take the guys or you go with them and he takes the guys, you guys make sure that they're very included. Talk about how you guys kind of figure out who's going to go with the girls this weekend, who's going to go with the guys, <clears throat> just how you guys kind of spread that out. Well, this year it was really easy um, to figure that out. With his daughter being a senior, I told him to stay with the girls, and I would go wherever the boys need to go. And um, so it just kind of works itself out. Um, next year, I'm sure I'll be with the girls a little more than he will be because I'll have two daughters on the team, and that way he can, you know, take the boys. Um, we I don't know that we've ever really discussed who was going where. It just kind of ended up that way. Yeah. Let's talk about sectionals this past weekend. I got his take on, on how he felt like you guys wrestled. You really dominated the section. You won by 51 points over Corner, who was second place. You took 13 out of 14 guys that qualified for the state tournament. How did you feel like you guys wrestled last weekend? Um, I, th I thought we wrestled great. Um, I'm going to say there's a lot of things we can fix. Um, th this team, and I know we've said it before, but – I, I haven't seen them get locked up and tight yet. They they are they're loose. They're ready to wrestle. A lot of these kids have been wrestling for a lot of years. So so you know something like this is, is nothing really new to them. Um, overall, we wrestled great. Um, Friday was probably the best first round of a tournament that first two rounds of a tournament that I can remember us being a part of in the last 13 years. It was just. Once one got rolling, they all just – I honestly believe these kids, they see one of our guys going and they're like, I'm not going to be the one to mess this up. And so it just kind of rolls. I, I really don't know how to explain it other than that. Obviously, your son placed in the top four. He's headed to the Huntsville this weekend at the state tournament. He's going to open the tournament up against the same guy that he just wrestled for third place in Cox from Madison County. Let's not talk about Cox. Let's talk about your son and just, man, I mean, you've talked about all year trying to get the respect of other people. Talk about how you feel like he's improved throughout the season, improved from last season. Just kind of talk about what your, you know, your goals are for him this weekend. Well, I'll start off with saying Dylan, he's a um – this is his sport. He decided that a long time ago that he loves wrestling. Um, he loves it more than than majority of people probably do. He he's nonstop. He he wants to go to practice every day. He wants to go off season. I you know days that I'm trying to take off. Look, son, I'm tired. He he's wanting. No, dad, we gotta go practice. Um, he's traveled the country wrestling in in some of the biggest events in the country this this past summer. Um, and what the growth that I've seen in him this summer is not necessarily his technical ability, but his mental game. Um, last year, he drew if he'd draw the one seed or if he'd draw a kid that beat him or drew um, – you know, a kid that was a previous state champion, he would have gotten his head and he wouldn't have wrestled well. This year, every time those big matches have came up, man, he's been ready. He's he's beat some really good opponents this year, previous state champions, state placers, state qualifiers, as an eighth grader. And and so he's done really good. Um, he, he also uses, you know, things like – uh, what we've talked about before, rankings and stuff. And he, he puts that, um, I noticed this weekend, on his background of his phone was the latest rankings and it didn't have him in it. And he uses that as a chip on his shoulder. Um, even though he's just an eighth grader, he, he doesn't wrestle like an eighth grader. And um, and so the improvement from the, a year ago to this year is just amazing. And uh, I can't, if, as long as he keeps working like he's doing, uh, there is no ceiling to his wrestling. I hope that background's not my rankings. I hope it's SC Wrestling's uh, rankings. I, I'm not sure whose it was. It, it was either yours or SC Wrestling. <laughs> well, if it's mine, I need to get a picture of that this weekend because that'll be good yeah. Facebook material for Absolutely. us. Uh, Coach, obviously you guys have a big story, and I, I didn't want to put pressure on Coach with the questions. I can put pressure on you yeah. with the questions. But you have a chance to win three straight traditional state championships, four state championships in three years if you count the Dulles Championship. 
That's a story right there, but also a story is five eighth graders making the state tournament alone. Obviously, I feel like Peyton Andrews is one of the most improved wrestlers from the start of the season to now. Looking at those five eighth graders, I talked to Coach Fulmer about them, but when you look at those five eighth graders and what they've done this year for this team, and looking at the future, this is a group that could genuinely break records in the state of Alabama. Talk about these five eighth graders, man, and why they are so successful as young as they are. So, it, this, this they, they are five eighth graders. Um, and, and most people just see five eighth graders out there. For me and former, this started uh, ten years ago, I guess, uh, when they all entered youth. Um, Dylan and Kale and, and these guys, they entered when they were four years old and started wrestling youth wrestling around here. And and we pushed them and we pushed them and they encouraged their friends and. Since they got to about the fourth grade, we've talked, uh, me and former have, about, hey, when this group gets up here, they're going to do some special things. And, and we jokingly said, or if they don't, we won't have a job no more because of how successful they were growing up. Now, you can't never measure youth success versus varsity success, but you hear coaches all the time talk about closeness and a brotherhood. And look, these guys, they are all brothers. They, they've been wrestling together their whole life. That's all they know. Um, do they get in arguments and, and get mad at each other? They do every day. And But at the end of the day, they're brothers, and they encourage each other, and they pick each other up when things are going bad. Um, just a quick example, this week in the sectionals, first person to Kale after he lost in the finals was Dylan. And first person to Dylan after he lost in the Concy finals was Kale. So that, that they just they love each other and, and they always encouraging each other and, and they're all so competitive that they're not gonna let the other one outdo that one. And I, and I think that has a lot to do with it. Um, it. It's crazy to think that there's five eighth graders that are on this team. I'm not gonna say leading this team, but they do, they do. Um, we have our leaders, but they're there too. And they're pushing, they're pushing those guys, which have in turn, encouraged our older guys to you know to get better and, and wrestle harder and the one thing I can say about these five eighth graders is it might not be their ability on the mat but it's their they don't care who you are they don't care how many times you've won something they're gonna come after you and you might beat them and that's okay they're gonna shake your hand and they're gonna come off the mat but they're gonna figure out how to come back yeah Coach, final question. Obviously, I talked to Coach Fulmer. He's a little superstitious, staying at the same hotel that he stayed at the past two years to win the state championship. Maybe pull out the same coat from the past two years. I don't know. But are you a superstitious guy? Uh, are you like him when it comes to that? Well, I'd like to say I'm not. But I'll tell you a quick story. Um, when we wrestled in the state duels finals, um, my son, Dylan, had to wrestle Logan Hartson, who's a great buddy of his. They, they're, they're, they're best friends. Or not best friends, but they're really good friends. Logan Hartson has taught Dylan a lot over the summer. I had on a certain undershirt for that match. Um, Friday of this past week, I wore that same undershirt. <laughs> So, you know, I'd like to say I'm not, but obviously I am. Yeah. So uh, I, we, that's another thing for me and former go good together. Um, when he asked, when we talked about hotels, it was the same exact hotel. I don't know if he told you this. We stayed in the same exact hotel at sectionals this year also. So, yeah. Well, y'all didn't win sectionals last year, no, so he, he he was trying to maybe just start a trend at that one that didn't happen the year before. Coach uh, Coach Justin Brown, assistant coach for the Weaver Bearcat Wrestling Program. Coach, next time we talk, could be after you guys win a state championship this weekend, could be me and you walking down the fairways after you strapped one about 285. I don't know, you think you can hit about 315? Uh, then, then days are, are by far. <laughs> Gone. Uh, if I can just get it in the fairway, I don't really care about distance. No more. Coach Justin Brown's also the golf coach. Obviously, we'll have golf action starting up uh, next week. Believe it or not, I can't believe the winter season is coming to a close this weekend in Huntsville. All right, guys, I want to thank you so much for spending time with us today on the locker room. We hope you'll join us back tomorrow where we're going to talk more Weaver Bearcats, but we're going to talk with the track and field program. So we hope you'll join us back here tomorrow night on the locker room presented by Ted's Floors and Beyond.